Hello, Block 2, little scholars, you little dumplings. Uh, it is I, Mr. Smirchna. It is Sunday night. The Huskers lost. The Packers are winning. I, as you know, will be gone from class tomorrow. So at this point in class, you've hopefully done your nuclear bell ringer number one. That is practicing alpha and beta decay, as we started to talk about on Friday. You hopefully just watched a short video where you learned a little bit about radiation and that it's not always truly harmful, but radiation is something that comes from a nucleus that is unstable. And it can be unstable for several reasons, but we remember from Friday that if it's unstable, that oftentimes means there's too much stuff in the nucleus. So it will kick things out. And what we call that is radiation. Okay. Now, with that being said, this is kind of my lead in video to your lab you're going to be doing. It's going to be very simple, but it will be very informative. When we talk about something being radioactive, what really happens, and I'm going to switch my screen up here, what really happens is that if I go start right here, this might be radioactive lead. We know that that lead is radioactive, so what that means is it's going to kick stuff out and kick stuff out. Just like your bell ringer showed, when it kicks something out, like protons, it becomes a new element. So. What's crazy about that is if I start with 100 grams of my radioactive lead, five years later I might only have 50 grams of lead. And the reason why is not that the other 50 grams disappeared, it's that it became something else. And like we talked about the other day, that's the daughter isotope. So you can see here that we have this magical amount of time called a half-life. And a half-life is exactly what you guys think it is. It is the time it takes. I think I even have a slide right here. It is the time it takes for half of a parent isotope to decay. Now, when we again, when we say decay, that does not mean it's disappearing. It means it's kicking out the radiation and becoming something new. Okay. <clears throat> so after two half lives, we see that even more of the parent isotope is gone because it keeps decaying. All right. So eventually, um, you know, there's the whole idea mathematically that we'll never get rid of all the parent isotope, but this is, this is how we, uh, we radioactively date things. When we find a, a mummy in a cave, what we do is we figure out how much carbon does it have, and we figure out how much carbon it used to have, and, and that's called carbon dating, and that's how we figure out that the, the footprint we found or the mummy we found was 3,000 years old. All right, so at this point in time, uh, Mrs. Sexton or Mrs. Huss, I can't remember who I have, if the kids don't have the Half-Life lab sheet, Please pause the video and give that to them. If you guys do have it, please look at it. Um, Mr. Champ should be bringing over the materials. And you guys will notice at the top, you either, uh, I believe you're going to be using a, a cigar box. There are not cigars in there, Bryson, Chase, okay? There's no cigars in there. Um, but I believe there should be die in there. Die is in the plural form of dice, okay? So if you guys look, um, there's a table at the bottom of your sheet, and it says number of shakes and number of cubes remaining. I believe you should all start off with 128 uh, die. So I know it says 100, but you should start with 128, unless I'm wrong. And if that's the case, number of shakes, however many you start with, number of shakes zero is what you're starting with, okay? And what that's like is this picture right here. It's like radioactive. Uh, lead, let's say, all right? And then you're going to shake it up. And what that is, is it's simulating time. And we know that since it's radioactive, some of it's going to decay into something else, which is, again, why we call it radioactive decay. It's when that material is kicking stuff out. So then you're going to shake it up once. And what you're going to do, um, step number two says remove the ones that are marked side up. What you'll actually do is take all the evens and get rid of them. So all the evens, so the twos, fours, and sixes, and you're going to move them to the side. The reason why is that those are the daughter isotope, and they're now something else. Then you'll keep the odd numbers, one, three, and five, and you'll count them up, and that's how many cubes remain after one shake. And that one shake, what it's like, guys, is one half-life. So then you're going to record that in your chart, and it should be about half. It won't be perfect, but... You'll, just like it says, count the number of cubes and then repeat it a few more times. And at that point, guys, you're, you're going to shake it and you'll get rid of all the evens again and you'll keep the odds and you'll count them. And eventually, I mean, I, I highly doubt you guys will get up to 13 shakes. Some of you might get to eight or nine, but eventually you'll get down to where you just have one or two atoms left, atoms being the die. 
And that's like over here in this picture. That means we don't have very much of the parent isotope left and most of it has decayed into something else. So what you'll do then is you'll take your chart and you guys will make a graph, okay? And that graph, I'm gonna give you a little cheat here. That graph will end up looking something like this, okay? Now yours on the other hand, and I, I'll find a different one here. Yours will have number of half-lives on the bottom and your number of half-lives will be number of shakes. And then what you'll end up doing on the side here is not the percentage, what you'll end up doing is the number of cubes remaining. So obviously at zero shakes, your graph should all start out at 128. After shake number one, you'll want to graph how many you have and it, it'll look something like that curve. All right. If you guys have questions or have something come up, um, make sure you talk to Mr. Champ. But otherwise, there's, there's eight conclusion questions. And again, I don't just want this to be robot mode. I want you guys to think about why is this called a half-life lab? What is this like in the real world? And what we'll, we'll keep learning about here is this is how we do a lot of things in the real world. Um, when a doctor orders radioactive barium for uh, an x-ray, they can't just order 10 grams if they need 10 grams because some of that 10 grams is going to decay into something else. And by the time he gets it, it might only be 8 grams. So um, I don't see this taking too long, but get to your lab stations. Let's do partners. If you're stuck, uh, I'm sure there's quite a few people who will have a good grasp on things. Mr. Champ is right across the hall and he has physics, so just knock politely. Um, do a good job on your questions and then you guys have a little bit of half-life practice in your packets and I'll be back on Tuesday to save the day as uh, long as Olivia doesn't have a baby in the next two days. So uh, behave yourselves, get things done. You can always use your Chromebooks to read online about stuff if you're confused. Otherwise, hop to it, behave for the sub, and I'll see you guys Tuesday. Bye.